my name is Christian Råberg. I come from the Swedish ESF Council. I'm one of the sponsors, actually, of this event. Uh, I will explain that a little, little bit later, more in detail. Uh, and I wish you very, very welcome to, to, to this uh, afternoon seminar. Um, we have a very tight schedule, actually, and uh, the question is how we will be able to, uh, to, to fulfill it fully, but we'll see what happens, yeah? Um, the European Social Fund is, as I said, actually financing the thematic network on integration on the labor market or in the working life, which is uh, the organizer of this uh, seminar. Uh, and uh, the project manager there is the Institute for Future Studies. Um, and we have four other networks in the European Social Fund. Uh, their task is to try to identify and to evaluate what is called best practice in all the other ESF projects, some 2,000. Uh, in this case, I think there are some 300 projects in the field of integration of newly arrived migrants. So this is a task for, for, for the thematic network on integration. So this is the main organizer of the uh, uh, seminar, but we have, and I think this is very important to stress, that we do have other EU-funded projects here. And uh, uh, the, the most important of them is, of course, the Edu Asyl project, which will be soon presented uh, by Professor Louis André Sekva from the Hamburg University and Marin Gag. Uh, and this project, I mean, is based on a project uh, starting somewhere in 2004, 2005, I think, uh, which was in another or a third EU program called Equal. Uh, and I think it's important to stress that the EQUAL program itself uh, was one of the main instruments for also addressing issues concerning the integration of asylum seekers and refugees. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it has ended, uh, but the interesting thing here is actually that what the EDU Asyl project has done is to go back to those participants, some of them, very few actually, but still, who were participants in some of the equal projects in these four European cities. It's Gothenburg, it's Hamburg, it's Glasgow, and it's, it's uh, Florence. And we have, uh, as you will meet him quite soon, uh, one of the participants actually here, Aliu Yalu, who has been participating in the equal project in Hamburg between, well, you will tell them, uh, Maren actually later, yeah, and that is uh, Aliu Yalu. So, I mean, this is a very important exercise to go back to and to follow these kind of life or career paths, actually, which participants from former EU projects have done. And in some cases, they are, of course, very successful. In other ones, they are not, I mean. And in this case, it has been successful. But anyhow, uh, the whole idea to look what happens years after the project has finished, I think, is very important. Uh, and it's something also for the ESF to see how that can be done. Um, we will have other, other kind of presentations. We have uh, one from Gunnar Myberg, for who is a researcher at the Institute for Future Studies, who has been looking at, uh, well, I would say the differences, the big differences between uh, the reception services integration policies in Denmark and Sweden, or uh, the city of Aarhus and, and Malmö. Uh, and uh, I think it's also very important to stress that we do have uh, uh, a presentation from the Swedish National Audit Office, who quite recently made a study on the asylum reception services in Sweden, something which hasn't been done for years, actually. So I think this is extremely important that you have done. I'm very glad that you've done it, actually, as you know, because I, my background here is that I've been working with these issues for years, uh, already since the 90s, but I have left this very field uh, since a couple of years ago. Um, and we will also have a comment from, from ECRE, the European Council on Refugees and Exiles, Anne Batili, somewhere here. She just arrived, yeah, wonderful, there you are. <laughs> um, uh, which I also think is important because what has happened there is actually that the directive on reception conditions, the EU directive, has quite recently been revised. And we will have a comment and an update on that from, from uh, Anne Batili. Uh, the ECRE is a kind of umbrella organization for uh, some 70 or 80 NGOs uh, in, in, in the whole Europe. And the whole thing will, will end with a kind of panel discussion where, where we have uh, some of the participants uh, uh, and also other people taking part from the NGOs, from the uh, Academia uh, and, and from the Ministry of, of Employment. 
Uh, so this is what will happen, and I will just say uh, one or two words more. Uh, one word is about the edu asyl once more. Um, the background, let's say, the theoretical background for what they have done in these interviews and in these analysis of these careers or the former participants, asylum seekers, refugees, you find it actually in this book. And it's for you a unique opportunity to have the book with you, at least the most ambitious of you, because there will be some, I think, 70 copies for free outside here, yeah. And it's an extremely interesting book. It has a kind of theoretical chapters in the beginning. Uh, could be a bit hard for someone who is not so academic as uh, Professor Louis Henry, yeah? <laughs> Uh, but there is also some very interesting case studies which are about young African asylum seekers in Hamburg and exactly this theme, how do they survive uh, having their background from some African countries in the land of or the city of Hamburg. Uh, there is also a kind of handout, as I remember, or as I uh, said, uh, concerning the Edu Asyl project. It's just two pages, I mean, you could read something about it. The report and the final report from the Edu Asyl project will actually be launched later this spring. So there is no report from the project for the moment. Um, there will also be some interesting recommendations also from the EU-funded uh, networks on European level. It's just two pages. We had a meeting last week in Hamburg uh, in one of these networks and we adopted uh, some well, I think some 15 or some 20 recommendations concerning uh, the uh, reception uh, services and the integration of asylum seekers. And I will say that also as a final word, uh, as a background, I mean, ECRE and many of the NGOs, as well as many of the now uh, projects which are up and running, has stressed the importance of the integration measures for asylum seekers in a very early stage. ECRA has stated integration starts day one. Yeah? And I'm very glad, I will say that once again, uh, that the National Audit uh, Office here in Sweden has actually taken the same standpoint. Yeah? And we have seen that the current Swedish government is not exactly on line with that. But I do hope that this seminar and conference will help us together to, to achieve a more uh, efficient, actually, integration also in the early stage of asylum seekers. Okay, um, without any further ado, I will uh, 